الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحب أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters my dear children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, you remember last Friday I was talking about uh, special knowledge and special gifts which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give some of his chosen servants. You don't have to be a prophet or a messenger. The man whom Moses went out with was not a prophet or a messenger, but he had more <coughs> knowledge and information from Allah in a different department, different from what Musa was aware of. So it doesn't mean by giving someone special knowledge, it makes you a prophet or a messenger. No, it doesn't. I would like to spend more time today regarding the grace of Allah and the gifts of Allah, which he gave Dawood and Sulaiman alayhim as wassalam. So let's try to live together the days of Dawood and Sulaiman, David and Solomon. In Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, the Prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a court case where David was judging between two disputants. And Solomon, who was a young boy, was sitting there at the desk or at the bench, as they call it. When they both listened to the two people, the two disputants, David gave a judgment. And Sulaiman gave a judgment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, although both were given judgment and knowledge, but the judgment of the young boy was favored. Allah did not belittle the judgment of Dawood. And he praised the judgment of Sulaiman. But what I like here actually, the fact that the father, an experienced judge, accepted the judgment by his own son, a young boy. He did not belittle his son or tell him off. Very often, if I am going out with my son and I say something and my son contradicts me and my son could be right, I get very annoyed. How dare you challenge me in front of the people? You should have accepted what I said. You should have supported me. No, 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 no such thing. Maybe I'm out of touch. Maybe my son has more knowledge with me now, uh, more than me now. So we have to show respect to our children. We cannot tell them off in public and belittle them and because of my ego, no. Or because you think you are the father, then you have the right to do it. No, no. And this is a very interesting situation. You might have heard this court case before, very quickly. I'll mention it again in one minute. There was a farmer and a shepherd who lived next door to each other. One evening, the sheep of the shepherd went into the farm and finished off the crop, whether it was a vineyard or whatever, whatever it was, and ate everything. It was ready to be harvested. We are going to ask for compensation now. Are you allowed to ask for compensation Islam? Yes. Yes, you are allowed. Yes. So, the shepherd admitted the neglect, admitted the manslaughter, not the killing, admitted that it was his responsibility because unfortunately he did not mend the opening or the uh, in, in the fence, so all the sheep went inside. Or he did not feed his sheep properly. They were very hungry, so he admitted neglect. So David asked 
the farmer, how much would you have sold your crop for? He said, uh, X, Y, Z. Okay. And he looked at the shepherd and he said, how much would you have sold your sheep for? He said, X, Y, Z. He said, fine, no problem. What's the big deal? Give your sheep to the farmer to compensate his losses. It's fair, yes? Fair. Suleiman, alayhi salam, said, the farmer did not lose his capital assets. He did not lose, he did not lose the farm. He only lost the produce. So what we'll do, you give your sheep for one year for the benefit of wool, milk, newly born spring lambs, maybe a little bit more than a year until you gain your losses and then return the sheep to the owner. And it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Both judgments are okay. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the verse by saying, فَفَهَّمْنَاهَا فَهْم تَفْهِيم means we made it clear, more clear. We inspired Sulaiman to be able to give such a judgment. Beautiful, think about it. <coughs> and they were both happy. They were both content of what judgment they had. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلًّا آتَيْنَا حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا حُكْم Doesn't mean ruling here like, like, like king. It is judgment. We have given, Allah is saying that, وَكُلًّا آتَيْنَا We have given both of them, or each of them, حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا حُكْم Wise judgment and knowledge. Now we are going to have more information about the knowledge. What knowledge is Allah talking about here? What did he teach Sulaiman? What did he teach Dawood? What are the things they, 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 and what, what is the benefit for us today about what we are reading? Something happened 3,000 years ago for the sake of what is What is the relevance? Why Allah is telling us all these things? Surely, because we, are, we can benefit out of all these things in our life. Every word you read in the Quran, you can benefit out of it if you have fah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the next verse, uh, let me read this uh, uh, comment here. His son Solomon, a mere boy of 11, thought of a better decision where the penalty would better fit the offense. The loss was the loss of the fruits or produce of the field of vineyard. The corpus of the property was not lost. Solomon's suggestion was that the owner of the field or vineyard should not take the sheep altogether, but only detain them long enough to recoup his actual damage from the milk, wool, and possibly young of the sheep. And then return the sheep to the shepherd. David's merit was that he accepted the suggestion even though it came from a little boy, Solomon's merit was that he distinguished between corpus and income. And through a boy, and, and, and though a boy was not ashamed to put his case before his father. But in either case, it was Allah who inspired the true realization of justice. He was present and witnessed the affair as he is present all the time. And this is very interesting. You see, we cannot detach Allah from our daily actions or activities or thoughts if we always bring Him into our mind. If we always think of Him, He will guide us to the right path. He will guide us to the right decision. He will not leave us to go into darkness. Allah is the guardian and the protector of those who believe. They get them out from the depths of darkness into light. So we need always to bring the Allah into our mind. If you bring him into your mind, he will always guide you to do the right thing, inshallah. Sorry. We have 
commanded the mountains, the hills, and the birds to pray in unison with David, to praise the Lord. You can hear the birds, but you don't know what they are saying. You can't hear the mountains, can you? You can't. But they are singing with David a.s. <coughs> Some people think that these mountains and these rocks and these walls, they don't praise God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everything, everything praises Him. Even the thunder. <coughs> but we don't understand what they are saying. <coughs> so the knowledge He gave the wood was the ability of singing in a beautiful rhythm, the praises of Allah when he reads the Psalms. Zabura. Zabur is the book which was given to the wood. And he is singing it with the birds and the mountains in the morning and in the evening. And if you wake up for Fajr every day and you can hear the birds and you can see them in the evening, the same, subhanAllah. And you remember how the wood used to pray with them in unison, used to praise the Lord, used to sing the praises of the Lord in unison with them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُنَّا It was we who did all these things. It was Allah. In the same way Allah gave Isa alayhi salatu wasalam the power to give life to the dead or to cure the lepers or those who are born blind. He gave Sulaiman and David so many fadl, fadl, so many bounties, so many gifts, so much grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ لَبُوسٍ لَكُمْ لِتُحْصِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ We have taught David to make coats of mail for your benefit, to guard you from each other's <coughs> violence. Will you then be grateful? Are you going to say thank you? <coughs> we have given David, and this is going to be explained in more details in Surah 7. The making of coats of males is attributed to David. It is defensive armor, and therefore its discovery and supply is associated with deeds of righteousness. In contrast with deadly weapons, which man invents for offensive purposes. Indeed, all fighting, unless in defense of righteousness, is mere violence. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُنَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا Fight those who fight you. But in the cause of God, in support of righteousness, and do not transgress. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Allah does not love those who transgress. So what David was doing, he was doing something to protect the warriors from being injured or killed, it was a shield which they had to wear. Allah says, فَالْأَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ Are you grateful? Are you going to say thank you? I mean, this is something which we all need to reflect on. <coughs> and to Solomon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِسُلَيْمَانَ الْرِيحَ عَاصِفَةً تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ to Solomon, we gave him the power over the wind, over the unruly, unruly wind. Can you imagine? Suleiman had the power to control the wind, to direct the wind, to make the wind flow from this point to that point. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the water cycle in the Quran, he says it is him who sends the wind to collect the moisture from the surface of the salty oceans and lakes and rivers and bring it all the way up and 
turn it into clouds, different format or different forms of clouds, and then Allah will direct them in the skies from one place to another and will command it to rain on certain area and not on the other. It's all done by Allah. It's Allah who does all this. But Allah also gave Sulaiman the power over the wind. This has been interpreted to mean that Solomon had miraculous power over the winds and he could make them obey his order. In any case, the power behind was and is from Allah who has granted man intelligence and the facilities by which he can tame the more unruly forces of nature. In Japan, because they have so many earthquakes, the structure engineers designed buildings on moving. Can you imagine? The foundation is flexible, so it can move with the movement of the earthquake, so the building will remain intact. The same with an aeroplane landing, touchdown. Can you imagine what shock absorber is being designed <coughs> when the plane hits the ground at a very high speed and a huge weight and the shock absorber is designed to absorb the impact which would generate it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave us this intelligence, this knowledge to be able to use it to benefit humanity. The moment, the moment you start to use it, to create problems and to wage wars against the civil people, it becomes a crime as far as our teachings are concerned. A crime that you are building something to destroy. You are not building it as a deterrent. You are doing it to destroy other nations or other people. And Allah says, we do know all things. Another knowledge which Allah gave Sulaiman. Can you see your Satan? If we have Satan, can you move forward, please, everybody? Everybody, please, move forward, forward, forward. Can you, have you ever seen Satan? Any of us? <coughs> have you? No. Are they good creatures, Satan? No, they are not good creatures. But if you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, he goes. If you read, وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ رَبِّ أَنْ يَحْضُرُونَ They go. When you have an attack from Satan, and you remember Allah, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ طَائِفٌ مِنَ الشَّيَطَانِ Can you imagine طَائِف? Like satanic thoughts coming to your head coming to your mind. Don't allow them to grow. Don't allow them to affect your conduct or affect your thoughts. Immediately bring Allah into your mind, they will go. But Sulaiman had something unbelievable. Allah gave him the power to control Satan's and employed them. He employed them to do work for him. Can you imagine? He's using Satan's like someone who is, who is spending uh, a life sentence in prison and uh, he is uh, being sentenced uh, 25 years, say, for uh, 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 hard labor. That's exactly what happened. He was punishing Satan's by giving them hard jobs to do under his supervision, under his control, standing there all the time watching them. وَمِنَ الشَّيَاطِينِ مَنْ يَغُصُونَ لَهُ وَيَعْمَلُونَ عَمَلًا دُونَ ذَلِكَ وَكُنَّا لَهُمْ حَافِظِينَ And of Satan's, were some who dived for him. Dived. What were they doing when they dived? What were they getting? Pearls, corals. And did other work besides. And it was we who guarded them. It was Allah's power ultimately who granted him wisdom Solomon tamed the jinns with wisdom. I mean, this is a very interesting point. He used the wisdom 
which Allah gave him to tame the jinn, to make them, and I'm talking here about satans, not jinns yet. The jinns will come into chapter 34. But here we're talking about satans. In chapter 34, starting from verse 10. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ مِنَّا فَضْلًا We have given Dawood grace from us. Fadl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, تَلْكَ الرُّسُلْ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ These prophets or messengers, we have given one more gifts than the other. Allah did not say we have regarded one more important than the other. Allah didn't say that because we say لا نفرق بين أحد من الرسول. We don't make any distinction between any of his messengers. We can't differentiate between them. But Allah is saying I have given some more gifts than others. He spoke to Musa. He gave the Holy Spirit to Isa, alayhi salatu wassalam, wa ayadnahu bi ruh al-Qudus. As far as David and Solomon are concerned, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ مِنَّا فَضْلَ يَا جِبَالُ أَوِّبِي مَعَهُ وَالطَّيْرِ وَأَلَنَّا لَهُ الْحَدِيدِ Again, Allah is repeating in this verse the fact that the wood used to sing David had the gift of song and sacred music. And this is shown in his songs. All nature, hills and birds, sing and echo back the praises of Allah. Is that all? No. وَأَلَنَّا لَهُ الْحَدِيدِ You know, hadith is iron. أَلَنَّا لَهُ made it very soft in his hands. He can hold it in his hands and make any shape he wants. Whether did he put it in fire and he melted it, there is, there is a bit of dispute here. People say no. He had the power in his hands of shaping iron. He didn't rely on this technique of a blacksmith. And we made the iron soft for him. Iron or steel is hard stuff, but in the hands of a craftsman, it becomes soft and pliable. And with it can be made in instruments for the defense of righteousness. These, in the literal sense, are coats of mail and defensive armor, and the manufacture of them is traditionally attributed to David. So David was the very first one to design this sort of shield you wear. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verse he tells us that even he told him how to make them. He gave him the gift of how to make these arms, these coats. You know what I'm talking about, yes? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Have you seen the, the uh, people fighting uh, in the old... Uh, yes? Yes, exactly. They, they wear this sort of metal... <coughs> shield or jacket or armor and that was David who invented it under the supervision of Allah command make you coats of mail balancing well the rings of chain armor and work you righteousness for be sure I see clearly all that you do coats of chain armor have to be made with cunning art if the chains are to fit into each other and the whole garment is to be worn in comfort in fierce warfare then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse 12 he tells us what did he give Solomon what did he give Solomon apart from the wisdom Apart from the knowledge he used to communicate with the birds and the insects, apart from his control over the jinn, Allah says, وَلِسُلَيْمَانَ الْرِيحَ غُدُوُّهَا شَهْرٌ وَرَوَاحُهَا شَهْرٌ 
And to Solomon, we made the wind obedient. Its early morning stride was a month's journey, and its evening stride was a month's journey. <coughs> the winds are swift and can cover in a short morning's or evening's flight the distance which it takes a whole month to cover on foot or by bullock cart. In our own day, with air speeds of 400 miles and more per hour, this seems a moderate statement. So he was a man who was in control of the wind, to direct it in any direction he wants, to add to its strength or make it more gentle, I think he worked for BBC News uh, weather uh, forecast, something like that. Can you imagine all you see on the news when you are looking at the weather forecast, what satellite image being received regarding storm coming this way or that way, but we have no control. No one has control over the wind to direct it from this place to that place or to cause this cloud to rain or not to rain. We have no control over that. But he gave such control to Sulaiman, alayhi salam. وَأَسَلْنَا لَهُ عَيْنَ الْقِطْرِ And we made a font of molten brass to flow for him. So now he has brass already melting, already boiling, and he has iron. When you put the iron and the brass together, you create an alloy. Again, he was the first one to do that. وَمِنَ الْجِنِّ مَنْ يَعْمَلُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ And not only the Satans, he was in control of them, but the jinn. He employed the jinn to work for him. Can you imagine? Something we can't see. Among the jinn, there are the good and the bad. Like us, we have the good and the bad. We have shayateen al ins satans of ins, and we have shayateen al jinn. So he had full control over satans, hard labor, working for him under his control. And if anyone would disobey, he will receive severe punishment. And at the same time, he's now in this verse, verse 12, chapter 34, he's in control of the jinn. ومن الجن ما يعمل بين يديه بإذن ربه. They are working in front of him in front of in, in facing him by the command of his lord and whoever would walk away or turn away from our command we will give him the punishment or a taste of the punishment of the hellfire what did they do for him? You know, you remember previously we were saying some of them would die for him. Getting pearls from the bottom of the sea or getting corals, whatever. But the jinn helped Suleiman to build the temple in Jerusalem. I see a lot of these things correspond to the Old Testament. But there is one which I need to do a bit of research. And I need to ask one of my rabbi's friends regarding the Satans and the jinn working under the control of Sulaiman. I need, I need to find someone to confirm that because I couldn't find it. So uh, the, the, the verses clearly state that Sulaiman was in command of the jinn and the Satans and he used them to do work for him. And one of the jobs they did was to build the temple in Jerusalem. Allah says in this verse, they worked for him as he desired, making arches, images, statues, basins as large as wells, and cooking cauldrons fixed in their places. وَقُدُورٍ رَاسِيَةٍ Then Allah says, اَعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُدَ شُكْرًا Exercise thanks. Sons of David. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ And this is a very important statement. 
Allah is testifying, confirming that very small number of his servants are grateful. Very small number of his servants say thank you. <coughs> when was the last time did you say thank you to your mothers, to your wives, to your parents, to your husbands? When was the last time? Think about it. Did you appreciate your breakfast this morning? Who prepared it for you? Who made you a nice cup of coffee or tea? Do you appreciate your wives who are running up and down, picking up the children, doing this and that for you? How often do we say thank you to each other? Yesterday, the man who started 25 years ago, this center here, died. Mr. Allah Khan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him and shower him with his mercy, admit him to his gardens of bliss, and give patience and perseverance to his family and reward them for their calamity. And I say today, thank you to Mr. Khan, Laik Khan. I remember he came to my house 23 years ago and he asked me, please, Dr. Fim, can you help me on this? We were about five or six more people who are still trustees. Some of us died, two or three, three of us died already. So, we cannot take things for granted in this life. If Allah is saying, it is, it, is, it is so painful that we don't show gratitude, we don't say thank you. And, and we are complaining all the time. We are, all the time. We're not satisfied with what Allah gave us. We're not satisfied. We, are, we always complain, all the time. And I'll tell you a story, true story. A few weeks ago, I, I, show, I, I saw a video of an Egyptian doctor, maybe in his late 50s, early 60s, who said the new graduates, new graduates who are working with him in the hospital are, are complaining all the time that their wages are not enough to feed their families, the newly appointed doctors in the hospital. So he said, I wanted to teach them a lesson. So while he was doing the word round, he took them to an old man in his bed. And the man was in early 70s. And the man had a jug next to him. And the man was not drinking from the jug, he was spitting, spitting in the jug. This, the man had cancer, and he cannot swallow the saliva. He cannot. If he leaves it, it chokes him. So he had to spit it out all the time. So this senior doctor asked the man, what would you like from Allah? He said that I can swallow my saliva again. All of us, all of us, alhamdulillah. You take it for granted, yes? You are swallowing your I have no problem. But what do you want? Ah, I want to change my house, I want to change my car, I want to change this, I buy this, buy that. Think basic thing. The man said, all I want from Allah that I can swallow my, my, my saliva again. That's all. We have to show gratitude. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِ الشَّكُورِ Very small number. Very small number of my servants. Few. Argument. Now, can someone tell me how did Suleiman die? <coughs> he is died where? Stay. On his stomach. On his stick. Very interesting, isn't it? What does it show us? Now, I want you to imagine. He was there like that for a long time because the Quran uses the word Labitha. Labitha. So he was controlling the jinn. The satans, and he was standing on his stuff. You know, stick, just leaning on his stick. I think Churchill has one like that, yes? You can see it like that. And the stick was very famous with Musa, alayhi salam, as well. It played so many roles. Now, a termite, an ant. You know Surah An-Naml? You do remember the ant which came out 
and and carried out risk assessment and told all the ants to go back to go back into their habitation before Suleiman his army will crush them. There was an ant, an ant. It started to nip his stick. It's eating the stick from the bottom where it touches the the the, the ground. And then he fell. When he fell. The jinn realized if they would have known the future, they used to claim that we know Al Ghaib. Al Ghaib is the unseen. They claim, they try to persuade people that they know the future. And Allah is saying, if they would have known the future as they were claiming, they wouldn't have remained for a long time in the punishment which has been given to them. ما لبثوا في العذاب المهين فلما خر when he fell تبينت تبينت الجن أن لو كانوا يعلمون الغيب ما لبثوا في العذاب المهين they wouldn't have stayed in this humiliating punishment it proves that the bodies of the prophets as Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم told us does not rot a body of a prophet doesn't rot. The earth doesn't eat it. Imagine if someone was standing like that, an ordinary person, for a week like that or 10 days. You can imagine the smell and the degradation. But Sulaiman alayhi salam. So let me read the last footnote. The statement illustrates three points. However great and the glorious human power and the grandeur may be, it is only for a time. And it may fade away even before people know of its decline. Two, the most remarkable events may be brought to light, not by a flourish of trumpets, uh, not trumpet, not trumpet, no, but by a humble individual, unknown and unseen, who works imperceptibly and undermines even so strong a thing as a staff on which a great man may lead. Work done by men, merely on the basis of brute strength or fear, as in the case of the jinns, will not endure. This is brought up in a strong contrast against the power and majesty of Allah, which, all in, which, which will endure, which cannot be sapped, and which can only be fully appreciated by a, tra by a training of the will and the heart. In the same way, in David's story above, his mighty strength as a warrior, remember the battle against Goliath, when he killed Goliath when he was young, and his skill at making armor are only to be valid when used, as it was used in the service of Allah, in righteous <coughs> works. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us, inshallah. Shukran. If uh, my book is available for sale, the money goes to the mosque.